We saw the Dr. Meter PM18 in how it performs in the last video. In this one, I'm going to take this unit apart and we're going to take a look at the construction quality and see how well this unit's built and also look for any safety deficiencies. So, stay tuned. We're going to take this thing apart. We're going to do a teardown. First, we'll start by removing the probes and turning the meter off. And I left it on. It was actually has an auto shut off feature, so it won't kill the battery. So if you leave it turned on, it'll turn itself off. So we're going to remove the rubberized protective housing. And this unit here, this is actually quite a strong housing on this thing, so I had a struggle with a bit to get it out. And the first thing we'll do is we'll remove the batteries from the unit before proceeding to tear it apart. So what we have here it appears to be not bad construction, nice surface mounted components. Okay, I would I would glue down that uh, little uh, crystal there. That, that would be the probably one of the first things that's going to break if it gets dropped. But uh, a little bit of hot glue on there to hold that down probably would be a good idea. Here's our fuses. It's got a 20 amp fuse here for the 20 amp test. And this is our 20 amp uh, input. It goes through the fuse here. And our milliamp test is over here. This is the milliamp test here. It goes through a 650 uh, milliamp uh, fuse. I think we've got a couple of, uh, of MOVs here, PTC4s. Uh, that's the MOVs to protect against over voltage. And everything is pretty much all on this one big IC. Now in this case, it's, it's, it's an encapsulated, this is going to be a custom ASIC that they've made for this unit. Let's uh, take the board out. Oh, this by the way is a light on the back side here. So when you turn on the light for the display, this light also illuminates so that you can uh, see what you're working on if you're working in a dark area. We'll just remove the screws here and take a look at the other side of the board. board comes off and there's the display so here's our backlight our backlights are internal uh, on this display here's our display here I don't want to touch the uh, connectors there's I don't want to uh, get any uh, contamination on them. here's our input switch as you can see it's just a rotary switch here and uh, it looks to be construction looks to be good. I mean, this could be a point of, of at some point, this could be a point of uh, requiring attention to clean the contacts. I'm not going to touch this now because I'm sure that they've probably got some type of a contact uh, preservative on here to keep, um, you know, keep the contacts from oxidating. But uh, anyway, um, the only real uh, service issue I can see looking at this unit here from, from this perspective is. Uh, at some point maybe having to take this unit apart and use some deoxid or something on the contacts if if the switch were to get dirty but um, other than that it's got two rubberized switches here for the light and for the hold and uh, this one wants to switch between frequency and the uh, and the AC and frequency and duty cycle the other one turns on and off the light and operates the hold function for the display other than that just the one switch 
Uh, this all looks to be pretty good. The soldering here doesn't look to be too bad. Uh, this is the high current. I believe this is the high current loop. Goes through the fuse. Yeah, where are we here? Yep. So there's this is your high current shunt here. Uh, high current goes through the fuse, goes through this trace here. This is bonded through the board right here. This is bonded through to the other side. So you've got multiple uh, pass through points. So that'll pass the full 20 amps through the the shunt and to the common over here and uh, so that looks to be good if you go more than 20 amps well the fuse should blow but if you were to bypass that fuse and go more than 20 amps I think we'd see this uh, circuit would evaporate here and then the meter would be toast so that looks all oh, looks pretty good let's just uh, put this thing back together and see if it works now that I get the back back on it here this is just a quick look inside this unit but I I don't see any uh, faults in the manufacturing all of the components look to be fastened down there's this there's, there's obviously no user user serviceable parts in this unit other than the fuses you can change the fuses if the chip blows you're you're dead in the water but that's to be expected right you, you wouldn't expect to be able to change the main processor on any meter and I think that's pretty much standard uh, all the meters use their own custom chip Now the unit is not waterproof, there's no o-rings or any seals anywhere on here, so don't drop it in the water. And uh, other than that, hey, this thing looks to be really well built. I even like the fact that the battery case has its own plug here, unlike some of them where they just have contacts that press up against the board to supply power. This one actually has a separate uh, battery uh, plug to put the batteries in. There it works. This is our this is our non-contact test probe here. So this just sits up inside this little dome here. So it's insulated. That's your sensor for your non-contact probe. So that just goes in just like that. I put the back on it. If I turn on the light, as you'll see. If I press and hold the light, that light on the back comes on. So there's your little work light. That's a quick look, a teardown of this video. If you haven't already watched the demonstration where I put it up against my fluke meter, uh, please do watch that when it is a comprehensive test where I tested out all the functions of this unit. I tested it um, for AC voltage, DC voltage. I tested AC voltage on the Variac right up to 150 volts. I only tested it DC up to about 13 because that's all my little little cheap power supply over here can put out is 13 volts. But it, it tracked the voltage accurately with my Fluke 12. So I wouldn't anticipate that there'd be any errors on the higher ranges. And um, resistance, I tested a couple of resistors on it. It tracked the resistors, it measured them accurately. Uh, I was able to test diodes, transistors. Even when I tested the diode, I tested a blue LED, which is something that my fluke meter won't test because it only tests at, uh, I think it tests at 1.5 1. 1. volts maybe. I, I don't know, I'd have to look up the specs on, on the old fluke, but uh, this one tests for diode testing, this tests at three volts, so it can test a blue and violet. And of course, 
white LEDs. Can be tested, it'll measure the voltage drop. So testing the white LEDs in an LCD TV, you can test all the diodes individually with this meter, whereas with my Fluke, well, I can test them, but they just glow. It doesn't give me an actual reading on the meter itself, whereas this one will give a reading. But that's uh, that's a teardown on this thing. Pretty impressive for what it costs. I give this one a couple thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.